Sir Edward Lee. Uh, I commend the Minister for the moderate and sensible way in which he introduced this bill, and I urge him, when considering how we should vote in relation to all these amendments, to be robust and to hold the line. When this bill becomes an act, it will be crawled over by so-called human rights lawyers. I believe this act is the bare minimum to try and deal with the scandal of cross-channel crossings, which are putting so many lives in risk. Let's just pause for a moment and think what we can agree on. The push factors are enormous, such as the misery in the world, in places like Yemen, Syria, Iraq and many other countries, that there is no limit to the number of people who want to come here. And let's consider the pull factors. The pull factors that we have the most liberal labour laws in Europe, that we speak English, we could do nothing about that, that we have no national identity card, which I think is going to be increasingly essential in the modern world, that people could vanish into the community, that we already have large uh, communities from all over the world. The pull factors are enormous, and President Macron, in a way, has got a point. I think we have to ask people who are opposing this bill and seeking to amend it, what is their solution? Everybody accepts that this cross-channel trade is appalling, it is criminalising desperate people, it is lining the pockets of gangsters. What is the solution? Such is the pull factor and the push factor that even if you did have offshore asylum claims of t for 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, it would probably make very little difference to the number of people desperate to get into this country by any means at all. I repeat that what we have in this bill is the bare minimum to try and break this cycle of it being just about economically attractive to make this appallingly dangerous journey. I think we have to have a variety of measures in our toolkit. I don't know whether we'll ever resort to pushback, although the Greeks have pursued it very successfully. I don't know whether we'll ever resort to offshoring, although the Australians have used it very successfully. Yeah. But if we are to have any chance, well, this is a distinguished person, of course. <laughs> He recently come into the chamber. I was at the Westminster Bridge event. Uh, could you just reflect for a moment that there are a million refugees in Bangladesh, there's many hundreds of thousands in Uganda, there's over a million in Poland at the present time, and there are many countries around the world that are very poor, have very little infrastructure, have taken in far more refugees than any European country. They are holding their hands out to support people. He appears to be moving in the opposite direction. Well, I, I don't think that's true. I think actually whether you're talking about our response to Ugandan refugees, to Hong Kong and many other areas, we've actually have been generous. We have to have a sense of proportion, such as the overwhelming number of people who want to come here, that we just have to hold the line. And if we don't, it would have a catastrophic effect on race relations. A catastrophic, yes, it would, because people would be angry about it. They would think, why did I vote Brexit when I can't even control my own borders? What is the government doing? The government, to be responsible, has to have a response to try and deal with illegal cross-channel crossings. And if you look at all these amendments, they would just add to the pull factors. Consider one amendment, for instance, which says that you should be allowed to work after six months. That is an extraordinarily attractive pull factor. So I'm afraid that the government has to hold the line on this. My personal view is that until we are prepared to criminalise people who take this illegal route, until we are prepared to arrest them, and until we are prepared to deport them, we will never have a chance of dealing with this trade. This bill is just the first step in trying to deal with this appalling problem. And I ask those who support these amendments and who oppose the government today, I repeat this question, what is their solution? People are pouring across the channel every day. Sooner or later, there's going to be a terrible tragedy. We've, always, we've already had one tragedy in November. What is their solution? How are they going to stop it? How are they going to break 
this cycle used by criminal gangs. There is no solution apart from what the government is attempting to do today. It is a minimum solution. It is actually a humanitarian solution. It is trying to prevent people taking these appalling risks. And if we allow any of these amendments, any of these amendments, if we don't hold the line, sooner or later there will be an even greater tragedy in the English Channel.